So, uh, Krishna is unique. He is the, the root of all other existences. And how did he get to be that way? Well, that's just the way it is. <laughs> he didn't become like that. He didn't get like that. He always is like that. He's eternally like that. He's eternally the source of all the other eternal living entities. Nityo nityanam, chaitanya chaitanya. I'm going to keep repeating this verse until you all learn it. Eko bohunam yo vidhati kama. That uh, there are many, many eternal beings, many, many conscious living entities. But there's only one supreme living entity. And who is he? He is the one who is supplying all the other ones, all their necessities. He's maintaining everyone, giving them all the desirable things. So what is the source? Who is the source of all those desirable things? That is Krishna. And that's the name, the meaning of the name Krishna. Krishna means all the desirable things, all the enjoyable things. Um, the reservoir of pleasure, Srila Prabhupada translated. Um, so, uh, by the kindness of Srila Prabhupada, now we're experiencing so much uh, wonderful support. And uh, I want to brag about my devotees, but we're, we're, it's, it's a little bit too early to tell all the details. But we'll tell at the festival. Uh, we'll, we'll come out and but something wonderful is about to happen. <laughs> huh? Sounds like 2001 now. Something wonderful is going to happen. Yeah. And uh, when it does, then uh, we'll get a lot of uh, visibility and recognition. And uh, with that, of course, is going to come a lot of responsibility. But that's all right. That's OK. We are having now a some very mature people, very capable people are being attracted to this mission. And uh, of course we have our, our Adventure Monk team and they're ready to hit the road and go to India. And, uh, but I, I think we're, it's not like we're going to be roughing it. <laughs> You'll be surprised. Uh, we are going to be received very, very well. And in fact we're going to be uh, swamped with invitations and uh, opportunities. So uh, then the, uh, the art will be to select which ones are the, the really good ones. Uh, of course we wish that we could expand ourselves like Lord Krishna and go everywhere. <laughs> but we can't. We can only be in one place at a time. So. We have to do uh, whatever we can uh, to get the most mileage out of everything we do. Uh, just like Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada never wasted anything. He used to keep notes when he was traveling. He kept a diary and included in his diary not only was what happened on a particular day, but every cent that he spent. Uh, even he would write down, I spent 35 cents on bananas, uh, 50 cents for some potatoes, whatever, yeah. like that. He would keep detailed expenses. So, uh, in fact, I know the one devotee who, whose job, whose service it was to clean out Srila Prabhupada's quarters in the Radhadamadar temple, Vrindavan. In the corner of, the, of Prabhupada's room were stacked pages and pages and pages and pages of nothing but personal records and diaries. He kept everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Even business records going back 20, 30 years. He kept. So uh, this devotee was given the service to, to get rid of all these things. To clean up, clean up the room and make it ready for the visiting devotees to see. Because, because the room had become like a shrine. You know? But actually it was his workroom, and so it was full of all his stuff and had to be cleaned up very nicely. So Srila Prabhupada kept detailed records of every little thing. And he was um, very, very careful with money, never spent money unnecessarily. 
never used anything unnecessarily. He would say, when you, when you wash your hands, put a little water in your hand, turn off the, the faucet, put soap, rub, wash, turn on the faucet, rinse, and then turn it off immediately. Don't waste Krishna's water. Don't waste Krishna's electricity. When you leave the room, turn out the light. Turn off the fan. You know, he was very, very particular about this. And now we see, you know, uh, in those days we thought we had unlimited energy. But now we see that the oil is running out and so many things are going to become rare because of environmental problems. So actually, the resources of this world are not unlimited. There are many, many people on this planet and a finite amount of, <laughs> of things to feed them and house them and maintain them. So those things have to be managed very carefully. It's not, that, it's not okay for a small group of people to live like kings at the expense of everyone else. That's not all right. Yeah. Stated in uh, Mantra 1 of Sri Ishopanisha. Isha Vasyam Yadam Sarva. But whatever is your share is given by the Lord. And you should not take more than that because it does not belong to you. It belongs to Him. You see? So this is our philosophy. And as long as we follow this philosophy and where we are careful to apply the resources that Krishna gives us, well, guess what? He's going to give more and more resources. Uh, as soon as we're irresponsible and we start to waste or consume more than necessary, then he'll cut it off. I've seen this again and again and again. As soon as we want to use something for our own enjoyment, Krishna will make it rare and scarce and limited. But when we want to share with everyone and serve everyone, then it becomes very abundant. So this is the secret. It's counterintuitive for a materialist. For example, if, if you want to have lots of food, what do you do? Feed people. Yes, give it away. Give it away. If you give away food, especially prasada, not just ordinary food, but nice vegetarian food offered to Krishna with love and devotion, cooked with care, purity, and uh, then you distribute this prasadam to as many people as possible. Guess what? Krishna is going to make you rich. You'll have so many bags of rice, so many bags of dal, uh, so much flour, so much spices, so much ghee, so much everything. You won't be able to eat it all. <laughs> because Krishna likes this very much when Krishna Prashadam is distributed. So that's one of our programs. We're going to distribute Prashadam in India. And we'll have a special page. You can donate just for that. And the money will be used just for that alone and nothing else. And because of this, we'll always have very abundant food. Uh, and similarly, because we have a little bit of knowledge about spiritual life, we're also giving that away. And we're giving as much as possible. And guess what is happening? Krishna is increasing everything more and more. He likes this. He really likes it. So he supports it. He gives, he gives encouragement and he gives us enthusiasm. So what we need to do then is not to be misers. Uh, when, we, when we think of being conservative or saving uh, energy or money or, or like that, then the, you know, the, the materialistic image is of a miser, someone who necessarily uh, hoards things. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about not using more than necessary for oneself and then uh, not to waste whatever we're given by the grace of the Lord, but to distribute it freely and share it with others. What does a good or what does a great personality do? We see that a great personality is always giving. A great personality is always tolerant, patient, brave, and so many other things. Well, where does he get this? Ah, 
This is exactly what we're discussing now. And Krishna's qualities. So this is Janmashtami season. It's a good time to be discussing these things. Let's see where do they really involve. 24. Forbearing. A person who tolerates all kinds of troubles, even though such troubles appear to be unbearable, is called forbearing. When Krishna was residing at the place of his spiritual master, he did not mind taking all troubles in rendering service to his guru, although his body was very soft and delicate. It is the duty of the disciple to execute all services unto the spiritual master despite all kinds of difficulties. The disciple, living